Welcome back. Today we're going to explore the vibrant colors and timeless enchantment of Magic Kingdom. I'm going to be riding the rails and capturing the nostalgia of the iconic trains and I can't wait to share my pictures with you. Here's a unique vantage point to capture Cinderella's castle because it adds some foreground that you typically don't see at Disney. If you ever have a moment, it's good to stop at the train station here and just look at some of the nostalgia items. An interesting thing about the trains at Disney is there's actually four locomotives and each locomotive pulls five passenger cars. And so each one of those trains can hold 375 passengers. I think that's pretty amazing. One of Walt Disney's first jobs was actually selling snacks on various railroads. He said that his railroad career was brief and exciting, but ultimately unprofitable. As I'm waiting for the train to arrive, I'll share another fact about Walt Disney, is that he first drew Mickey Mouse on a train ride heading from New York to California. The locomotives here are stunning and they're all steam powered. Here's something new, we'll let one of the conductors take the pictures. There's a vantage point you don't typically get at Disney. So the whistles you hear are also important. You have long and short blows and it's a pattern for whether a train is approaching a station or whether it's making a general greeting. And there's even whistles for if there's an emergency. Next time you visit, you can ask a conductor or one of the cast members to translate. And then you can learn what the trains are saying to each other.
I'm so delighted you've joined us today. There's nothing I enjoy more than showing folks around this magic kingdom, especially because there's always plenty to explore. I like a lot of the behind the scenes tours that you get from the trains. It's still thematic and you get a different vantage point at the park. The tracks are about a mile and a half and they circumvent the park and it's a great way to relax on a long day. So until this point on my journey, I've mostly just been casually snapping pictures. More enjoying the ride, I would say, but now I'm going to look for more compositions. So I'm going to look for foreground and medium ground. I'm also going to look for contrast. I'm in the shadows and I have lighted subjects. And I'm going to look for leading lines as well. Maybe vertical or diagonal lines that can lead to a subject. I decided at the last moment to hop off the train and I'm going to walk around to the front of the train and see if I can take some pictures from of the locomotive. In the meantime here at the water fountain I'm going to get real low, see if I can get some reflections and get some people moving in the foreground. So as I mentioned, these locomotives are all steam powered and they get their water here from this tower. It's very thematic and it looks nice, but it's also functional. This is where the water goes into the engines.
That steam is really hard to capture. It's so ephemeral, especially on hot days like this. It just evaporates really fast. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can use this rock wall as a bit of foreground and then I have the leading lines. I mean railroad tracks are great for that. It's literally leading lines into the locomotive and the passenger cars form lines and everything kind of leads to that subject. But I don't want the rock wall to be overwhelming as a foreground or even be confusing. If I focus on the locomotive and the point where it blurs out the rock wall, that could be confusing for the viewer if they don't know what they're looking at. So I need to be strategic about how I'm using the foreground elements in this composition here. So for the walk from the railroad station to the Tron ride, it turns out my GoPro lost battery and I didn't realize it right away. And so I lost some of my POV footage for this. I'll just show the pictures that I took of the ride. It's a really interesting layout with the contrast and lines and curves and stuff. I don't think it's the most photogenic ride, but it is very interesting. The Autopia track here is maybe one of my least favorite attractions at Disney, but it is interesting for taking pictures. In general, I do think it's slow and loud and kind of hot, and it smells really bad with all the fumes. But it's nostalgic for a lot of people, and it does make for good photography. Occasionally I need to step back, slow down, and realize that there is nature here at Disney. It's not all cement and attractions. They have a lot of good flowers. We'll see if I can get a couple more good shots of the cars.
Now, I don't know how long these are going to be here, but for the 50th anniversary celebration, Disney put up a bunch of bronze statues, figurines of various Disney characters. So if you have a keen eye, you could look out for some of these and you'll probably still see them for a little bit. I'm going to speed through this portion right here. I think that the crowded streets of Main Street, that's an important aspect of Disney that I'm not going to just skip over, but we'll rush to get to the next picture. Now if you've watched some of my videos already, then you know that I'm a big fan of catching reflections. And I love Disney reflections, I love shooting through glass, and I love catching things in mirrors or mirrored surfaces. So I can't end today without taking just a couple of these shots. Now if Disney parks are good at one thing, they're good at many things, but if I were to say one thing, it's the details. So everything, every gate, every surface has a lot of details. And we'll end today where we began with the railroad track at Main Street. Thank you everybody for exploring all the colors and all the enchantment of Magic Kingdom with me. For more videos, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.